Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we've got a guest post from Daniel Abendroth. He's from the YouTube channel Reaper for Podcasting, and in this video he will be explaining six custom actions that he uses every day for his podcast editing business. If you like this type of content, let Daniel know by subscribing to his YouTube channel. It will be linked below, plus anything that he mentions uh, will be linked in the description of this video. So let's check out six custom actions from Daniel Abendroth. My name is Daniel Abendroth and I run the YouTube channel called Reaper for Podcasting, where I take everything that Reaper can do and filter it down to what's relevant for podcasters. So John has asked me to create this video um, in order to show off some of my essential custom actions that I use in my podcast editing business. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the first custom action that I'm going to showcase is a Ripple edit. It's the most important one that I have, the one I use constantly. And it's as simple as highlighting a section of audio, hitting a single key to delete whatever is in that, uh, regardless of it's what track it's on. And it also deletes dead air and a whole bunch of stuff. It's super useful because when you're editing podcasts, there's going to be a lot of ums and stutters and a lot of mistakes and repeats and whatnot that needs to be cut quickly. Uh, and this is a really efficient way to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and just kind of jump in and show you how to assemble this. So I have a fresh install of Reaper. So let's go ahead and open our action menu. New action, new custom action. And I'm going to call this one Ripple Edit. The first action that we need to look up is item select all items in current time selection. Throw that in there. The next one is time selection. Remove content of time selection, moving later items. The third one is actually an SWS function. Now this one is optional, uh, but it is pretty useful. So if you don't have SWS, you're probably missing out. So check the Reaper blog to find out how to install SWS. A lot of useful tools there. Uh, so the one we're looking for is SWS crossfade adjacent selected items. And lastly, item unselect all items. And then make sure to consolidate undo points and then click OK. And now we have our custom Ripple edit. So one thing I forgot to mention is that the SWS, so whenever you make this edit, it has it throws in that little crossfade to kind of um, if there's like any artifacts that are left over, it fades them out so that, that way you don't hear those little clicks or whatnot when you're editing. The next custom action is a breath reduction. So in podcasts, I do uh, editing for a lot of other shows. And sometimes you get that guest or that host that just takes these really loud breaths. Uh, for the most part, I usually leave them in. Don't worry, worry too much about them. But sometimes after you add your compression and all this, uh, they can get pretty loud. So I like to have a quick action in order just to quickly uh, reduce that breath. So I've got a, a bit of audio. This breath isn't bad, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this just to kind of showcase it. So it's going to be the file uh, peak, which so is right here. I have this breath. So all I do is highlight this section, hit my key, and it splits it and then drops it down 5 dB. So it's going to be the file uh, peak, which is, and then it also catches up. So that way, as I'm editing, if I hear breath that needs to be reduced, I can Take care of that without actually stopping the playback. So let me showcase that. After mix, so it's going to be the file uh, peak, which is your true peak. Um, so this is minus 0.7. So it keeps going with the reduction. Super easy. That way you don't have to stop your editing in order to take care of that breath. Just like before, we're going to create a new custom action. I'm going to call this one breath reduction. The first action we're going to look for is item split. Items at time selection. Throw that in there. Oh, whoops. Remove that. Don't need that. Uh, the next one is going to be item nudge item minus 1 dB. And I'm going to throw five of those in there. Then view, go to play cursor slash position. And that is what catches up to the audio so you don't have to stop playback. Then item unselect all items. 
because whenever you split, it selects an item. If you're not paying attention, you could end up deleting it or reducing it even further. So this way it deselects all items. So that way you don't have to worry about messing with the audio without realizing it. And then lastly, time selection, remove time selection. And that uh, takes out the highlighted part. So that once again, you don't have to worry about messing with that the file without realizing it. And then finally, make sure to consolidate undo points. Otherwise, you'll have to control Z for each of these five, and that can get really annoying. So now, consolidated undo points, it's just one undo if you need to remove it. Click OK. And now we have that one. So the next custom action is what is called the Smart Cut. Both this one and my Ripple Edit uh, were inspired or borrowed from a friend of mine, Riley, over at podigy.com. Uh, and I'll be sure that there is a link to his guide. He has this amazing guide uh, for getting started editing podcasts in Reaper. Um, so I'll make sure that a link to that gets put in the description down below. So if you're interested, you can check that out. What's really good about this one, if you select an item, you can delete it. Even with Ripple All, it doesn't affect the other tracks. So if you, I use Auto Trim Split whenever I'm uh, doing interviews to cut out all the dead air. And you're often left with these like, yeah, or these little noises that are distracting. You want to get rid of them. But rather than if you just delete it, you end up with Ripple editing on, you end up deleting from all the tracks and you don't want to do that. And so the smart edit, you don't have to worry about that. And also it's a great way to delete audio without losing the timing. So let's say there's like something happens here that you want to cut, um, but you don't want to make it, you don't want to shorten this gap because maybe this is the, um, there's a motion behind it or there, there's something about that pause that you want to keep. So with this custom action, you can highlight that space and select the item and delete it without uh, reducing that gap. Because if with our other edit, whenever you do that, it pulls everything closer. Um, but sometimes you want to keep that space for whatever reason. So once again, we're going to create a new custom action. The first one is going to be set ripple off. So that way you don't have to worry about the ripple editing. Then we're going to edit, cut, items, tracks, envelope, points, depending on focus within time selection. The next one is going to be set ripple editing all tracks. Because you don't want to forget to do this because if you're doing an interview, you forget to do that. Now your tracks can get out of sync. And then view go to play cursor position. So that way you can make this edit and it'll catch up to the audio. Item, unselect all items. And then finally, time selection, remove time selection. And of course, consolidate undo points. Oh, and then don't forget to name it. Whatever you want, I call it smart cut. And OK, and now we have that one. So one thing about this one is it can get kind of annoying having to highlight, click this and then delete it. Um, so that's where a mouse modifier comes in. So if you haven't already, you can always change your right click in order to make this easier. So go into here, go under mouse modifiers. Under context, you're going to look for arrange. Arrange view, select right drag. The default action, change that to marquee, select items, set time selection. And click OK. And then what this does, do a right click and drag. And so now um, you can highlight and automatically select the items as well. Across multiple tracks as well. So then whenever you hit X, boom. So now you don't have to highlight and click. You can just use your right click and drag and then take out whatever you need to. So this next one I call my Adobe style edits. If you've ever edited a video in Adobe Premiere and you probably know about the Q and W keys. And if you're not familiar, what it does is it deletes everything from your cursor to the previous edit point. When you hit Q, when you hit W, it's from the cursor to the next one going to the right. And so I've recreated that in Reaper because a lot of times I just find it so useful. Whenever you're having an interview, you might know it's always like, oh, that's a great question. Or they start with an um or whatever. Or they maybe like on a solo show, they might like repeat it a couple of times trying to get that right take. And it's super easy just to be able to delete everything from the start point 
and everything before it um, just makes it a lot quicker. So you don't have to like highlight and try to get the exact point and end up with just like little sliver items or whatever. So it's super useful. So let me just kind of demonstrate how that works. Let's just say I wanted to delete everything, all this right here, this whole section right here. Rather than highlighting and deleting it, I can just go into where I want my start point to be, hit Q. Delete cycle. And it deletes everything from that cursor to the beginning of the item. And then it jumps back one second and starts playback. Uh, so that way, it's just one less. You don't have to hit uh, spacebar in order to keep going. It's just kind of one less step you have to worry about. And then the opposite of that, let's say I wanted to delete everything from this point over to the right. Then I just hit W Timber. and it does the same thing. Deletes everything and then jumps back one second and then continues playing. So we're going to create new custom action. Call this one Adobe style left, because it's going to be two separate actions. One to go to the left, one to go to the right. Uh, the first thing we want is transport stop. And then item split items at play cursor. Next, we're going to do SWS. Now, SW, this is required. Um, so you will need to have SWS installed in order for this to work as well as um, repack, because there is a Locusina uh, action. So you need the repack and SWS installed. Uh, so SWS select previous item across tracks, then item navigation, move cursor left to edge of item, remove items tracks, Envelope points, depending on focus. Script, Locusena, move, edit, cursor, back one second. Right there. And then transport, play. All right, so this one's a little bit more complicated, so let me go over it one more time. Uh, stop the playback. It splits the item. It selects the item previous to that split. Uh, moves the cursor to the left of that item, uh, removes the item, and then moves the edit cursor back one second, and then resumes playing. And then make sure to consolidate undo points to save yourself some headaches. Now the next one is going to be Adobe style right. This is basically just like Adobe style left, except whenever you make a split, it automatically selects the item after it, so you don't have to... Uh, jump around in order to kind of pick the right item. It does it automatically, so it's a little bit simpler. Once again, consolidate undo points. Click OK. And now we are all set there. Quick interruption from future me. I forgot one important step in this process. Uh, so on both of these, you're going to want to add item. Unselect all items right before you split it. Uh, so the reason for that is if you have another item selected, then it's not going to split it and you're going to delete something that you don't intend to. So to avoid all that, unselect all items to make sure that the split happens where you intended it. So here it is for Adobe style left right there. And for Adobe style right. So make sure to add that in. And now uh, back to the original video one is going to be the adjusting the play rate. It's going to be a toggle. Uh, so we're using the cycle action editor. So basically, if you look down here, this rate, one time uh, speed is too slow for me to edit podcasts. So I like to do, I like to listen at 1.5 time speed to get through it faster. Um, so I have a button that will toggle it between one and 1 1.5. All right, so go under extensions, cycle action editor. And if you have SWS installed, this will be here. You also need to have some XRAM script uh, installed from Repack, so make sure to have that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this so I can show you how to set it up from scratch. So right click to add cycle action, add this. I'm going to call it toggle play rate. Slide this over, go ahead and grab your action list because we will need to get IDs from here. So the first one you want to look up is transport pause. Right click, copy selected action, command ID. Right click over here, add, paste, enter. So come over here, do a search for X underscore set. Master play rate, 
to 150%. Right click, copy, add, paste, enter. And then transport play. Now we want to add step. And then once again, it's going to pause. Come over here, grab transport set play rate to 1.0 and then play. And then go back into your actions, do a search for toggle play rate right here. Go ahead and add this to whichever one you want. And now we can easily toggle between one and 1 1.5 playback rate. The next one, um, multiple, multiple times I have forgotten to set the playback rate to 1.0 before I rendered it and sent the audio to my client or uploaded it and released it. Um, so in order to avoid having that chipmunk audio, uh, I created a custom action to kind of to fix that uh, so I don't have to worry about it. Basically, what this does is whenever you hit the keyboard shortcut to uh, render the file, it automatically sets the playback rate back to 1.0. Once again, action list, create new custom action. I call this one better render. So the first thing is going to be transport set play rate to 1.0 and then file render project to disk. Click OK. It's simple. Uh, but it saved my skin so many times. So what you want to do is go in here, find your better render, add, and then whatever it is your keyboard shortcut for rendering is. So if you go under File, Render, for me, it's Control-Alt-R. So that's what I want to set here. Control-Alt-R. Click OK. The key is already mapped. I definitely want to overwrite that. So now, no matter what I have my play rate set to, whenever I hit the keyboard shortcut, it automatically sets it back to 1.0 before I get a chance to render it. So as long as you're already using the keyboard shortcut in order to render, you won't have any issues. If you do still go to File Render, um, it doesn't work that way. So just get into the habit of using the keyboard shortcut, and you'll never have to worry about forgetting to set your play rate back to 1.0 again. Now, I know I promised you six custom actions, but I do have a bonus one. I considered it a bonus because it's not free. It does require a premium script, but the amount of time that it saves me is well worth the cost. And it's not super um, expensive. For personal use, it's 20 euros. For business, it's 50. And for corporate, it's 80 euros. So if you're an, an individual, a student, or a nonprofit, it's only 20 euro. Uh, for me, it's well worth the cost. So two case uses. One, you have an interview that's recorded remotely through Zoom or through another uh, remote recording solution. Whenever you do anything over the internet, you're going to have that little bit of lag. So there's always going to be those little bits of dead air whenever you're having an interview. Second case use, I have a client who takes long pauses to think about what she wants to say next or how to word something. So I have a lot of these little um, four to five, sometimes 10 second gaps that I have to deal with. So let me show you how it works for both of these cases. So we have this audio that comes in at one hour, 32 minutes and 32 seconds. The custom action starts with the auto trim split. And these are the settings I use that work really well for me. Um, you may need to adjust them for your needs. I'm gonna come back whenever we're done with this because it's gonna take a minute. Okay, now that auto trim split is done, you can see we're left with a ton of these gaps where all that dead air was taken out. And that's when this premium script comes into play. It's called multiply gap by percents. And so I have mine set to zero right now. Um, so whenever I hit OK, it's going to bring all those items together and eliminate all that dead air. So if you remember, it was originally one hour, 32 minutes and 32 seconds. So now we're sitting at 53 minutes and 27 seconds. Just by doing this, I've saved 37, 39, almost 40 minutes of editing time and listening time. Um, that I no longer have to, one, listen, like go through all this silence and fix all that. So much time saved just on this one episode. Using this with a interview, let me go ahead and do the auto trim split. So whenever you do multi-track, 
Um, you want to make sure they have Ripple editing all. And then it just shores up all those little bits of silence in between the question and response that just comes from the national delay over the internet. So much time saved by just this one little thing that for me, it's well worth the cost. And that is all I have for you in this. Um, the six essential custom actions you need for podcast editing in Reaper plus one bonus one. Thank you so much for watching. Now, again, all the links will be down in the description. So to my uh, beginner's guide here on YouTube, to Riley's guide, uh, he has an article out, as well as a link to that premium script in order to make the truncate silence work. A big, big thank you to John for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge with this amazing community. Um, I know I threw a lot at you. So if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, look down in the comments. because I'm going to have a pinned comment because uh, I think that'd be the easiest way for you to reach me directly. So just leave a response to that comment and I'll get notified and I will try to get back to you in a timely manner. And again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Great video, Daniel. Thank you so much for making this guest post for us. Everyone, if you like this video, subscribe to Daniel's channel. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>